In this unit, we've looked at general area formulas and methods of calculating area for triangles and quadrilaterals, and we took a special look at the areas of regular polygons. Now we're going to look at how perimeters and areas are associated or related to each other with similar figures. So we're going to begin with theorem 10-7, which is the perimeters and areas of similar figures. And this one states, if the scale factor of two similar figures is a to b, then one, the ratio of their perimeters is a to b, and two, the ratio of their areas is a squared to b squared. And we can actually take this concept and extend it out to all different changes that happen. And the reason this works is we're counting the dimensions. Perimeter is a one-dimensional concept. And because of that, any measurements that we do is, uh, are going to be associated with that one dimension. The ratio of the perimeters is going to be the same as the ratio of the objects overall. Now when we start talking about area, that is a two-dimensional concept. We have length and width. So the ratio of the areas is going to be the ratio of the sides in two different dimensions. So we will square that change. Now one thing that we will get to later is that when we're talking about volume, this is a three-dimensional concept. So when we increase or find a similar figure in the third dimension, the volume will change as a cube from one item to the other. So we have to keep these ideas in mind as we move through. But let's see how some of these play out and how we can get a reminder of finding those ratios to begin. So in the first pair of figures here, these trapezoids, we need to calculate what the ratio is. Now we can't go through and find perimeter or area because we don't have enough information, but what is this comparison? If we go from small figure to large, it's 6 meters to 9 meters. Remember, we need to have the same units as we talk here. And also, we need to be able to reduce this fraction. So 6 ninths is the same as 2 thirds. So we will have a 2 thirds ratio. So for perimeter, it'd be a ratio of 2 to 3. For area, we'd be looking at a ratio of 4 to 9 because we square those. And again, not talked about in this lesson, but just get an idea for future. The volume would be at a ratio of 8 to 27. Now, with the pentagons on the right, let's actually go through and compute what those areas would be. Now, in order to do that, we need a couple pieces of information. For starters, these look like it, but in fact, they are regular pentagons. And the area of the smaller pentagon is known to be 27 and a half centimeters squared. So we need to go through and calculate what the area of the larger pentagon is going to be based on this ratio. So first, what is the ratio of their sizes? So we have 4 centimeters to 10 centimeters, which reduces down to 2 fifths. Now we're going to set up a proportion that this 2 squared to 5 squared ratio has effect as 27 and a half to an unknown value. And we're going to use our cross products and calculations to do this. So 2 squared is 4, so we have 4 times x is equal to 5 squared is 25, and 25 times 27 and a half is 687 and a half. Now, using our division property of equality, dividing both sides by 4, solving for x, gives us a end area of the larger figure of 171 and 875 thousandths centimeters squared. So if you know that one side comparison and the area of one, you can always use proportional thinking and reasoning to calculate the other. But we can also take this and go to find perimeters. 
we need to find the perimeters of these two shapes. Now each one of these is just a triangle and we ha know their overall areas. So what we need to do is set up our ratios to begin with. So since we're dealing with area, we know that a squared over b squared is the association. So let's take this and simplify each of these. So a squared is 50 and b squared is 98. If I were to solve this, I'd take the square root of both sides. Square root of 50 is 5 square root 2. And square root of 98, well 98 is 49 times 2, so it is 7 square root 2. Simplifying the fraction, since each part has a square root of 2, my end ratio is 5 to 7. So the ratio of the perimeters will be equal to the simplified form of the square roots, just as a reminder, square roots is how I did this, of each of those individual areas. So we can learn a lot about things, and in this we've been talking about similar figures where everything changes the same, but what if an object is doubled on one dimension and tripled on the other? And we're finding a comparison of areas. Well, you would take the original area, you multiply it by 2 and then by 3, so a total of 6, in order to find the area of the next one. And that will continue up through the dimensions. So make sure you have these ideas and information down and are ready to move forward.